a, the broader discussion would be how scalable is Bitcoin, you know, in its current architecture yes. and in the future, right? Um, you know, the, the debate lately has been uh, one of the core developers, uh, Mike Hearn, had put forward a proposal. Mm. The community debated it and eventually said, okay, you're not going to go with my, my proposal while well, I'm going to you know, take my toys and go home. And what uh, was his proposal? Uh, his proposal was to uh, create a thing called Bitcoin XT instead of the core client, a new client. Hmm. And the community more or less didn't come to consensus. So the, the Bitcoin's blockchain is a democratic system where the transaction processors or miners have the, the, the code is dynamic, meaning it can be updated as long as a majority of the network agrees to update the software. And uh -huh. so he had put forward a proposal saying, I think Bitcoin has scalability problems in its current architecture. Right. Here is my solution to it. And the rest of the community didn't agree with him mm -hmm. because they said, there's a dozen ways to solve for this problem. Right. We think that there are better ways to do it than what you've proposed. And he's walked off. And that's what all the debate has been around lately. And part of the problem you have is when you have a, a consensus-based system right. where it's democratic in nature and where the political process is public, meaning everyone gets to see how the sausage is made, right. it's messy when you're watching this process. And when it's all said and done, I think we're going to look back and say, wow, this consensus-forming methodology is great. It just creates a lot of public... You know, everyone gets gets to see how the things that we eat are made, and most of the time, most of us wouldn't like to see that. So when, um, yeah, exactly. So when you have uh, an idea to change Bitcoin's code base, as a developer, anybody could propose that. So I could go in and say, I think Bitcoin, every time a transaction should occur, 1% should go to this charity. And Correct. here's the new client I wrote, and everybody who wants to give 1% of transactions to charity, or let's make it even more ridiculous, 0.01% goes to f poverty, uh, you know, for the UN's poverty fund. And if 50% of the people who own Bitcoins, or 25%? So it's actually, the, it's the miners that... Today, the miners. Well, so it's, again, the, the system has actually got multiple layers. One, the developers, or sure. a developer has to write the code, put sure. it forward, and it goes really through kind of a peer review type of process where it gets vetted because, again, it's a very public process. Like an open source. It's an open source project, exactly. Like an open source That's project what it would. Is. And then the uh, people that are running the infrastructure have to come to an agreement. The miners. The miners have to say yes, and then they need to run it, process a certain number of blocks, and you actually need more than 51%. You, you really need to call it 90 You need consensus. You need of to get the, of of the those miners. miners. But then the miners are also influenced by then – the other parties, which would be the, the companies, the Bitcoin exchanges, uh -huh. the wallets, the payment processors, because if what happens is you go through this process of a hard fork where you get mm. two versions of the software running, which means now everyone's coins have been replicated into two Ooh, wallets. Boy. And now whichever ones the payment processors say we're going to accept as real and we won't accept the other ones as fake, they start to have an influence. So what you end up with is a, uh, a really distributed system. It's where almost like the government, like in the United States where you have the executive branch. Correct. And then you have the le the legislature, I guess, like in the Congress or whatever. And, and we didn't I, – I think even in my case, I'm, I've been surprised by uh, – the the various constituents, the level of influence they ultimately have over this. And I think this is the first time we've really tested this as a community. And that's why you've seen a lot of this sort of publicity as of late. Um, but, uh, you know, I the, the, the my view is that there are a lot of solutions to these problems, mm. meaning there's many ways to scale Bitcoin. It's not a matter of if we can fix it. It's a matter of how we choose to fix it. Okay. And there's some very, very smart developers, uh, I think some of the smartest engineers in the world that are focused on, how do we do this? How do we do this the best way? And let's crawl before we walk and walk before we run. We're not in some particular rush. And any yeah. of these problems that Bitcoin is having as of late are due to its success. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Let me stop for a moment this amazing episode and tell you about the Walker Corporate Law Group. Yes, they are a boutique law firm that specializes in the representation of entrepreneurs and startups and Scott Walker is the founder of that company, and he is a personal friend of mine, and he does a great job working with startups. I have literally introduced him to dozens, maybe hundreds now, of startups, and they all rave about the services of the Walker Corporate Law Group because their lawyers have decades of experience. You're not going to get junior associates who are getting on-the-job training with your startup. No. They're going to help you with mergers and acquisitions, licensing, terms of service, privacy policies, formation, all this kind of stuff, fundraising, and they're really great at it. And they do fixed fees. They don't want to surprise people with crazy 
crazy bills. They think that billable hours can reward inefficiency. So they'll just be fair with you. And that's what I love about them. Because if you're a startup, you don't want to get that sticker shock and get a huge, huge bill. Make sure you use the Walker Corporate Law Group. And you can do that by calling Scott Walker at 415-979-9998. 415-979-9998. You can email him, scott at walkercorporatelaw.com. Or you can visit walkercorporatelaw.com. Dot com as well. Scott at WalkerCorporateLaw.com and let Scott Ed Walker on Twitter know, at Scott Ed Walker, know that you, hey, you watch the program and you appreciate him supporting independent media like This Week in Startups. One of my oldest advertisers, one of my oldest friends in the industry, just a great guy, a total mensch, and he really takes care of the startups who work with him. Thank you, Scott Walker, for supporting This Week in Startups. Bye-bye. Okay, let's get back to this program. Come on. 